The views and opinions expressed on Real Talk with Horace Sheffield are not those of WADL TV 38 or Adele Broadcasting Corporation. Giving you real talk, real talk, real talk. Take a walk down this path through Detroit, through Detroit. This is real talk, real talk, real talk. Real issues straight from the heart, from the heart. Giving you real talk, real talk, real talk. Take a walk down this path through Detroit, through Detroit. This is real talk, real talk, real talk. Hello, I'm Reverend Horace Sheffield III. I'm the uh, host here of Real Talk on WADL TV Detroit. And of course, my capable host, uh, Ms. Deanna Salmon. Welcome, uh, Ms. Salmon. How are you today? I'm very good, thanks. And you? Wonderful. I am good. pleased to uh, always give information about phenomenal things that take place in Detroit. Uh, so much negative information, so much goes on that suggests that there's something uh, not of any value going on in Detroit. Mm -hmm. But here is a great great organization, the oldest African-American theatrical company in the state of Michigan. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Plowshares. Yes. And we're so uh, glad to have you. Why don't you introduce our guest? Yes, we'd like to welcome Mr. Gary Anderson. He is producing artistic director for Plowshares Theater Company. And uh, we want to first start not only with welcoming you, Gary, to the show. Thank you. You're welcome. But we want to understand uh, what is Plowshares? What, what, is, what is that name? Where does that name even come from? It's well, very as, unusual. Well, as the Reverend said, we, um, we are Michigan's uh, longest lasting professional uh, black theater company. Um, we, the name actually um, came from um, more so about dealing with the, the heritage of African Americans, um, of being working in the fields, plowing, mm -hmm. the, plowing the ground. And so what we see the theater company doing is similar, only in the process of developing new talent and new play. So we mm -hmm. till the field, we cultivate, we nurture yeah. new work mm -hmm. and new artists. Much in the same Digging way you new would. Furrows. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so, and so that's really what the, the, the yeah. name means, a breaking new ground, yeah. as it were. My introduction to theater is probably a little bit different than most people. Mm -hmm. They see it uh, purely as a form of entertainment. Uh -huh. But when you think about the Mile Mile movement right. uh, and, and how <coughs> messages were conveyed about liberation mm -hmm. and oppression mm -hmm. uh, and other forms of, of really educating the masses through you know, theater and drama, mm -hmm. it has such a potential and potent effect. Um, has some of that been lost when we go and see plays about, you know, Hoochie Mama and, uh, you know what I mean? Yeah, I know. I, I know exactly what you're talking about. I, I, I know, know exactly what you're talking about. That, some of that has been lost. I mean, if you think, if you go back in history, back to the development of theater on the continent, um, there has always been an important element of not only entertaining, but teaching and passing on a lesson um, that goes from one generation to the next. Mm -hmm. And so it's been really important for that to be an aspect of the performance, um, not just for the sheer entertainment value, as it were. Uh, specifically, African-American theater. I mean, you were talking about the Mau Mau movement. Uh, black theater was an integral part of the black power movement during the no 50s and 60s sure. and 70s. And, and so Plowshares has been, been very stringent about maintaining that connection. So we do work that directly connects to teaching teaching a lesson, passing on information, yeah. and, and passing yeah, on a sure. message. And to I want to make sure people have a, a clear sense of just how comprehensive mm -hmm. Plowshares is. You, you do more than just perform plays, right? Right, we do more than just produce plays. We also do educational programs for adults as well as for youth. We just got done actually conducting a summer theater camp for young people from between the ages of 12 to 18, actually participating in the craft of not only learning the theater, but also learning some of the other arts, organi arts disciplines that surround the theater, both, both you know, puppetry, um, the creation of mask work, um, um, looking at music and dance, and, and really cultivating their ability to stand up before an audience and present themselves, creating a character. Oh. Well, I, I love how Plowshares, um, your vision, um, well, and your, your mission is to nurture both the audience mm -hmm. and, and the, um, the actual artist that you're working mm -hmm. with. Uh, that is uh, it's just it's exciting. And what I want you to first share with um, our viewers is 
we want to know the website right 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 so that um, our viewers can connect with you there mm -hmm. what what is your website for it's, plowshares it's www.plowshares.org Plow for something P L O U G H. Right, 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 right. It's the U S version. It's P L O W S H A R E S. Okay, we're gonna post that for right, for right, you, right, right. and we want to keep this theater, uh, you know, alive and thriving. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we want to engage our our viewers yeah. to um, continue on to the next segment mm -hmm. with uh, Mr. Anderson here. And uh, can, I, can I just say something very quickly? Sure. I just sure. feel the spirit moving. All right. You know, having been a person that's written plays and performed mm -hmm. myself, mm -hmm. you know, we've got to support our own institutions. And it's tough out there to get funding. I go through that at Debo, and I know Ms. Solomon that does fundraising knows that people don't have what they had. But this is the oldest African American theater group in the state of Michigan. And I'm going to spend my time on this show asking people to make a contribution. Okay, and, and you can say it is on behalf of Deanna Solomon and Reverend Sheffield, WADL, whoever, but get a check book out because I know that the work and legacy that you've done. I, I used to go, when I mentioned right. the new center area, I used mm -hmm. to go and support. I, I had season tickets right. at plow t uh, Plowshares. So I just want to make that very clear. Can they donate on the website? Yes, they can. Okay, so that's important. www. Plowshares, P-L-O-W-S-H-A-R-E-S. -E I'm not a television evangelist. I'm not <laughs> offering you books and prayer cloths. But I'm asking you to support this viable African-American institution. When we come back, we'll tell you why. Real talk, real talk, real talk. Real talk. Take a walk down this path through Detroit. Detroit, this is real. Real talk, real talk, real talk. Real talk. Take a walk down this path through Detroit. Detroit, Hi, welcome back. Real. I'm Reverend Shuffield. I want to start where I left off. Please engage me. You know, I'm a benevolent, kind, compassionate person, always trying to help folks. I want us to help plowshares. I want this uh, broadcast and my listeners to really make a difference. Some of you all can write a $100 check. Some of you can write a $1,000 check. This is a way for young people who want to take those God-given gifts, often who are in conflict with parents and other folks who think they ought to be do doing things more meaningful, have an opportunity to develop that expression. They can be the next Stevie Wonder. They can be the next Mae Jamison. They could be, you know, someone that could sing at the Philadelphia Harmonic Theater or something. Uh, but write a check. Go to www.plowshares.org. Ms. Simon, uh, take it from there. Okay. Thank you. Well, um, not only are we going to give to Plowshares, we want to we want to understand uh, who your audience is. Um, I know that I have friends that have mm -hmm. come to, to the shows at uh, the Charles Wright Museum and some other locations. But uh, who, who is your audience here in Detroit? Our audience is primarily Detroiters, but we also have a, a good, strong contingent from the surrounding suburbs as okay. well. Um, we, we've been very um, careful in cultivating an audience of, of folks that really appreciate the kind of work we do, um, primarily uh, folks, uh, middle class folks, but we also have some, you know, that are there less fortunate because we have discounted tickets available um, and as those and as Re Reverend Sheffield mentioned you know we have some affluent uh, donors that have helped us out throughout the years as well. Okay. Are those affluent donors African-American? Uh, a, a portion some of, of them, them are. are. Some of them are. Yeah, I've just got a consistent theme yeah. here because you know we talk a good game but I it's agree. time for us to support our own stuff. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. This is the oldest African-American theatrical company in the state of Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to write a check, uh, but we need African-American people to support this. I mean, just think about the contribution of so many people who have such God-given gifts right. that will cultivate it. I mean, uh, I think it's important for people to know that people don't just become absolutely that overnight. They have to go through some training. No, you're absolutely right. We, we were talking bef um, beforehand about Lloyd Richards. Lloyd Richards, the, the director of the original production of a Raisin in the Sun, the, the head of the School of Drama for Yale University, one of the most prominent um, school drama, dramatic college university programs in the, in the country, um, and also the, the, the director of many of the works of August Wilson, was a Detroiter. Yes. Some of the best artists that have come out of here have been Detroiters. So, I mean, we have a very fertile ground here yes. to develop artists. And, there. but though, What's important to note is when uh -huh. those folks were here, mm -hmm. there were strong programs exactly. in public schools exactly. and other places 
for kids to hone exactly. that craft. Exactly. Now they've got to go to private institutions like mm -hmm. Plowshare mm -hmm. that has to be dependent upon private funding. Right. To right. provide those opportunities. Exactly. That's why it's important for you to get your checkbook. Write a check. This is not a telethon. <laughs> this is an ongoing appeal, and I really want uh, for there to be some some response to this. Ms. Solomon, you, you got a lot of I information know, on I, that. I do, I do. I know you you were uh, you've worked in conjunction with the Virgil Carl Center, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and um, with your students this summer. How how many students were you able to educate? We had about twelve students that we worked with this okay. summer with the with the program. It was a pilot initiative that we oh, had, so okay. we hadn't done it before, but we were very proud with the the turnout, okay. and we really engaged them and also their families in the in the product. Okay, was there was there a production at the end? Yeah, we had a culminating event, a showcase for everybody to present themselves so, oh. so it was really very positive I mean it was you really saw the development over the the six weeks of the of the of the camp and see they where these kids who may have been shy and very apprehensive were, were very prominent and, and, and dynamic in their presentations at the end okay how many of your your actual artists that are that you reach out to on a regular basis are uh, Detroit based oh. do, do you go outside of Detroit do you need to are we are we uh, stocked full. <laughs> we're, we're actually really well stocked. I mean, actually, the, the, to be honest with you, the company of artists that we work with, 99% of them are Detroiters. And oh, there's wow. only on a very rare That's occasion, good. and I'm talking about throughout the entire 20 plus mm -hmm. years of the company's existence, sure. we've, all, we've gone out to get people from other communities and brought them in, but very, very, very rarely have we done that. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't want to call any names, but there's one person I remember very vividly who Guy to start with you is a guy by the name of Kirk Kirksey. Mm -hmm. uh, does that name ring a bell? Mm -hmm. uh, Kirk is now dead. Right. Um, but Kirk, I went to see him at the Henry Street Settlement okay. uh, in New York. Uh, went with Atalisha Biles, Malcolm's okay. daughter, to right. see the chickens come home to roost. Right. And uh, Denzel Washington was, was playing the role of right. her father. Right. And Kirk was playing Elijah Muhammad. Right, right. Uh, but he comes out of plowshares. Yes, yeah, yeah. And so the reach has been broad. Yeah, we've been very uh, blessed. And why? Yeah, we, we've been very blessed in regards to being able to cultivate a talent here because it's, it is here. And like, like you said, you need an institution to be able to provide that, that, that venue for them to really kind of explore and, and examine that talent. Yeah, one other question. If, if, for example, I have a great idea for a great play uh -huh. that's rooted in Detroit that deals with a confrontation between Walter Ruther and my dad mm -hmm. over African Americans at TULC deciding not to support Mary Annie, mm -hmm. but Jerry Cavanaugh mm -hmm. uh, uh, as a liberal mayor, as a way of empowering African Americans. And they came up with a slate called Five Plus One mm -hmm. Five liberal council persons, one liberal mayor. And they beat the UAW machine, they All beat right. the union machine. Consequently, my father was banished from Detroit, sent to Washington, D.C. And the whole community, including the, the media, mm -hmm. came behind my dad and forced Walter Ruther's hand to bring him back. Mm. Uh, it subsequently ended in the black becoming a board member of the UAW when in 59 and on, even though he was supporting uh, civil rights, they wouldn't allow black to be on the board. Right. And Walter Ruther saying, if it's going to be a black, he didn't use that word. <laughs> it won't be Horace Sheffield. Right, right. That's a great play. Right. Five plus one is what I would call it. Mm -hmm. But do you do that kind of? We develop new work. Yes. Actually, that's yeah. exactly what we do. In fact, um, we're in the process of developing two new works uh, for next season right now. Yeah. So that's and do you retain ownership of those? Well, or? we can't retain ownership because okay. unlike with you a give film, birth to them. Then, so yeah, like, I mean, yeah. What, what we do is we work out with a with an arrangement with the playwright and develop that script. And, right. But but that's part of where your funds go, though, right? Right. Exactly. Because that is part you of the way. basically and that's what well, that's I mean, this is the beauty of this is this phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So you take a playwright, mm -hmm. you fund them, you give them an opportunity to develop a mm -hmm. work. Then mm -hmm. I'm certain you produce it too, right? Right. Oh man, yeah. write that's a check. Get your checkbook out, uh, $1,000, $5,000, $10,000. I mean, this is a way to put people to work so that they're not out there being that number of folks who are killed or killing folks and being able to get artistic expression, the things that are cultivated deep within the cauldron of their cranium and their soul. Right. Self-expression right. is the best, best way mm -hmm. uh, to fight poverty and crime, I think.
around. I'm sorry, Ms. Solomon. Oh, it's fine. It's, no, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure having you here, Gary. What What does your fall lineup look like? I know we uh, yeah, talked right. about your... Right. Uh, well, we open up the season with, uh, I don't know if you know, this year is the 150th anniversary of the beginning of the Civil, right, Civil I did, War. I didn't Civil know War, until you yeah. told yes. me. Right, 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 right. right. <laughs> so 1861, 2011. Yeah. So um, we've, we've looked, used that as a way of examining f the, the themes of faith, family and freedom this mm -hmm. season throughout all of our shows and so the very first play we're going to do do is a play called the whipping man it's written by a young writer named matthew lopez and it deals with um, a jewish confederate soldier returning home to his ancestral home in, in richmond virginia after it's been destroyed mm. and, and bellum south exactly and he is met by two of the former slaves Let's do this. We're about to take a break, I believe. Mm -hmm. Are we? Let's take a break. Okay. And we don't want to cut okay. that off, that okay. plot out, okay. plot off in mid in right, mid right. stage. We'll okay. be right back after this. Great. Real talk, real talk, real talk. Take a walk down this path through Detroit, Detroit. This is real, real talk, real talk, real talk. Take a walk down this path through Detroit, Detroit. This is real. Welcome back. We're getting some information on this. Right. Uh, Play set back around the Civil War days. Yeah, right. Fall lineup. Right, yes, right, right. right. Fall lineup. Thank yeah, you. the Whipping Man is it's uh, 18. It's uh, April of 1865, a few days after the end of the, the Civil War, and this con Jewish Confederate soldier returns home to his to Richmond. Um, he's met by two of the former slaves that worked his home, his plantation. They're now free. They're now free. <laughs> and so that's and the war that he fought to keep them slaves. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and that's actually part of the context of the yeah. story that, that here you are dealing with a man who is, was participating in maintaining the system as right. it existed and, and now is confronted with a new world. Um, not only is he confronted with a new world where he has to negotiate what the relationships are, but also these two now free new citizens mm -hmm. also have to do the same thing. Um, th it's, since it's April, they conduct a Passover Seder. And since the two slaves were raised as Jewish, they are par they participate in this and so the resonance of the passover seder which is about celebration of the israelites being released from bondage in, right. in egypt right. now has resonance because you're also talking about the freedom of sure. these of these african americans sure. and in context to the to the ending of the civil too war too bad too bad the uh the um words that God spoke to Moses, I let my people go, didn't resonate with him before he left to fight the war. Well, there you go. But the, in fact, that's actually part of the, what, part of the Seder. Yeah. They actually sing that song, yeah. and, and it's, it's part of the text. We've done the website. What's the phone number? Phone number is 313-506-2858. One more time. 313-506-2858. Okay. So we're going to post all of your information on, Great. on our uh, site here, so that viewers can can obtain your website and your phone number right. and perhaps a mailing address for those donations. Now, understanding your fall lineup, mm -hmm. I know that Plowshares is 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 about many things, mm -hmm. but uh, number one, you you like creating experiences mm -hmm. here in Very the city so. of Detroit. Um, oftentimes, people come into the city and they attend one event or they do one one um, activity and then they go. So you, right. you want to engage them into an experience. How, how is Plowshares doing that for this season? Well, the things that we're doing is partnering with other uh, companies or people who provide services in the area. I mean, for example, when you think about you're going to go out and enjoy yourself, you may think about eating. If you're coming mm -hmm. from a distance, let's say you want to do a day trip or a weekend trip in another community, you might think about shopping. You may think about what kind of act other activities you can do. If it's a ladies' night out, you got a bunch of your lady friends going. You might want to sure. look at going to the spa. You might find a way of, of connecting um, with some place where you can get a nice massage and whatnot. And so we're trying. We're working with partnering with restaurants and with other businesses and entrepreneurs to create packages that can be available sure. so that people can can yeah. think about it in a different context. It expands on the experience and not just going to see the show and then getting back in your car and going home. Yeah. You now have a full experience that you've engaged in maybe that goes for a full evening or over a weekend. But make sure you include the 1917 Bistro. That's exactly one of the ones that's that we one work of my, on. One of my they got great food places. there. Absolutely. Fantastic yeah. food there. Sure. Ms. Solomon, keep going. You're doing a great job. Well, thank you very much. Oh, and speaking of it, just engaging people in the experience, mm -hmm. where 
where will the rest of the lineup for plowshares take us? So I know there's it's deep, deeply rooted in the history uh -huh. um, in the whipping man. Right. Um, where where else are you taking us for this fall season? The, the holiday show is a piece called Jazzy Christmas, and it's going to be a cabaret piece oh. focused on a family focused cabaret. Very piece. lively, something for Absol for everyone. Absolutely, kids and mm -hmm. okay, it's all ages. Parents. Oh, great! Uh, and it'll be we'll be doing a cabaret performance uh, with by with a number of local artists um, presenting. Christmas songs uh, with a jazz adaptation to them, so that would be really great. So but we, so you only have two this season? No, 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 no. Okay. We, for the rest of the season, we're going to be doing, in February, we're doing a piece called um, Ruined, which is based during the Congo Civil right. War, right. Um, um, and it looks at the empowerment of African, of African women um, dealing with the chaos of that war-torn circumstance. And then the final show in the season is a p play called Gem of the Ocean, which was written by August Wilson. Okay. And it deals with, um, it's, the f it's, it's the first decade of the 20th century, and you have a number of um, African Americans who have been freed for, an, for about 40 years who are now trying to negotiate their lives in the North. And so it's set in Pittsburgh. Um, it deals with redemption and deals with the power of passing on legacy. It's a wonderful, wonderful play to end the season with. And where do you, where do you host these at? Well, different we're going to venues. Or? Yeah, we're going to be doing in different venues. One of the shows we're looking at doing back at the Car Center. We're also going to okay. be doing a number of the shows at um, the YMCA. But it's part of your fundraising goal establishing your own home? We would like to have our own home. We've, we've talked about it for a number of years, and so now our, our focus is to direct ourselves within a five-year period of identifying and, and, sure. and securing a Maybe permanent home. Maybe get Mr. Roberts to give you one of those small-sized Detroit public schools with a nice auditorium. Well, that'd be nice. All right, don't forget, <clears throat> we got to go www.plowshares, P-L-O-W, in a moment, plowshares. Uh, .org. I'm challenging you to donate some money. I remember when they had a, a home of their own right there on 3rd and the Boulevard, the mm -hmm. old New Center Theater, which, where all your productions were. They need their own location. They need funding to remain independent, and they need an opportunity of you helping them to make certain that other folks can prosper in these kinds of careers. Yeah, so we need, we need, we need that experience of Plowshares, Gary, Thank whether you. it's um, in the theater or outside of the theater. Right. I've had the, or I'm having the opportunity to participate in some acting um, that I was pulled into. <laughs> and uh, I tell you, I, I need your help. So <laughs> how, how can, um, I guess, adults, uh, us grown folk, Actually, do you have any programs that mm -hmm. that engage us at uh, at our uh, uneducated? <laughs> yeah, we're not talking um, about acting up or acting out. <laughs> yeah, right, right, that's right. That's not right. what we're talking no, about. No, we have but. we have acting pr um, classes that that actually our fall schedule begin in October. Ooh. Oh, okay. And we have we're, we're developing a playwrights unit so that we can get oh. people together to help um, young emerging writers work together on the development of, of scripts. Mm -hmm. Okay. How difficult would it be on our show, for example, because I, I want to lend mm -hmm. some support to you in terms of exposure, mm -hmm. to have a vignette or some uh, particular actor who's a part of one of your productions come and do you know, something that would give us a sense of what they would experience if they go to the theater as a way of us cultivating. I think we could do that without yeah. a problem. Okay. Yeah. I want to make sure we work toward that. I, I, I sure. would love for uh, Real Talk mm -hmm. uh, to partner with you mm -hmm. um, to see how we could be of some ongoing help. Oh, that's great. Uh, I am a firm believer, as Ms. Solomon knows, in supporting these kinds of institutions. Mm -hmm. So much negative stuff. That's why I love WADL. It's a Detroit-focused uh, television station. Uh, so much negative stuff goes on, and there's so mm -hmm. much stuff like this mm -hmm. that is actually... Uh, a changing the topography, transforming the topography or landscape that you never hear anything about. And so I'm, I'm really proud and pleased to give you an opportunity to come in and talk about what Plowshares is all about. Well, I appreciate the opportunity. You're very kind. And give out the phone number again and the website, and this is your opportunity to get a pen. If you get a pen, by the way, don't get a piece of paper to write this information down. Get your checkbook <laughs> and write a check. <laughs> And? Okay, the number is 313-506-2858. One more time. 
506-2858. And the website? www.plowshares.plowshares.org. Right. You, 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 you can find the schedule there. You can figure out how to donate. Right. But Simon, you've got the last word and the last question. Oh, the last word and the last question is, where do you see yourself landing? You what? know, with as far as the future is concerned with plowshares, where, where do you see yourself? I see, I see the company being part of the development of downtown, actually, and, um, and mm -hmm. being a, real, a premier theater in, in the downtown area. If you notice, unlike other major communities, we really don't have a major regional theater in this city, and oh. so that's where we see ourselves. Okay. Well, right. so let it be. That's <laughs> it. We'll be back next week. Don't forget to donate to plowshares. Give early, often, and come back again. Thank you. <laughs> real issues straight from the heart. I'm giving you real talk. Real talk, real talk. Take a walk down this path through Detroit. Detroit. This is real talk. This is real talk. Real issues straight from the heart. I'm giving you real talk. Real talk, real talk. Take a walk down this path through Detroit. Detroit. This is real talk. This is real talk. Uncut for the people of Detroit who got the opinion that they want to voice. I'ma give them real talk. Real issues. Real. Topics, real people address.